Moving right along, we're going to be talking about The Flash, uh, Season 2, Episode 2, entitled Flash of Two Worlds. <laughs> Good title. Uh, full Good. spoilers ahead. I don't think I have to tell you guys. This is about Jay Garrick showing up and um, really just kind of establishing there being an Earth 2 and uh, more about Zoom and all sorts of awesome stuff. So... Uh, Peter, what did you think about this week's episode? I had some fun with this episode. Um, I liked a lot of it. I had some issues. Um, I liked a lot of the, the Earth 2 stuff. I liked it. Even though it's they, they, they quickly just latch onto it and he starts explaining it and putting it on like the whiteboard and stuff, I still like that we're just going down that rabbit hole. And that's kind of the thing that I've loved about this show since it started, is just how much it's willing to go down the rabbit hole. And also, as a DC fan, don't think I didn't notice that there's 52... Uh, Parallel yeah. worlds. That yeah, should... that's. Uh... Or, and Alan's... Uh, uh, why are you rolling your eyes at that, Alan? What's wrong with that? It's so okay. Look, there's nothing wrong with br- that. It's a no, no, fucking no, 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 no. I'm gonna bring back a character from the Golden Age, right? One of the most cheesy times in all of comics, along with Silver Age. Silver Age is probably a little cheesier. Like this. Still, it's kind of cheesy. Exactly, it's that Some fucking kind of cheesy. This season feels like it is just delving straight into as much. Cheese as possible. It's in the fucking fondue. Like Velveeta cheese. What's yes. wrong with cheese? This has been a cheesy show since the start. No, there was there. Was, it felt more serious toward the start. It just feels like it's progressively getting more and more cheesy as it goes along, and it's it's kind of driving me out of it. Honestly, wow. Uh, I'm not I'm not enjoying it as much as I as I did in the first uh, season. I, I, no, I, dug the, I mean, I had a couple of small issues, but. Mainly, like, I don't understand why Ray doesn't have his speed force. Like, it, it just kind of annoyed me. Like, why, why is he deep? I mean, I'm sure he'll get it back at some point during the season, but, like, I just kind of annoyed me. Like, why, why is he not get his powers? But yeah, Because it's a TV show and you can't have two speedsters on the same team. Um, you will eventually. Alan, to your point on uh, <clears throat> the cheese factor, I don't, I mean, I feel like there's a little bit more because it comes with trying to explain a bunch of different universes, alternate Earths and whatever, it's going to get more cheesy because the first season was time travel and time travel was centered around a murder and trying to rectify that murder. And now that all that business is done, now it's a bajillion worlds, a multiverse exists, all these different things. And while all of that is happening, I appreciated Barry Allen's fortitude in, no, we have to keep, things safe how do we know that this guy isn't just trying to fuck with us how do we know that he's mm. not just trying to take us down i really really appreciated that and a part of that is stalling because it's a cw show and you can't just right. have crazy effects happening all the time but it also felt like an organic thing after everything that happened after the first season it's like of course he's not going to just trust some guy that walks in the door when they just made a remark about how they can't just have people walk in the door every five seconds yeah so, but at the same time it's like he was also running around a fucking wormhole you know and he knows from the last episode that there's doppelgangers out there and that people have like come through basically yeah but that doesn't, so it's necessarily, like, mean, that doesn't necessarily mean they should trust everyone that does right come right through. but it, it is kind of more of an incentive to investigate it and it doesn't really feel like he's at the forefront of that it feels like he's letting other people do it and then he's just challenging everything they say but at the same time this is a guy that's claiming to be another version of what you're trying to be he's like stepping on your ground almost so you're going to take that more personally and I felt that in, um, I forget the, the actor's name, but his performance, it, it felt like he was like offended that some other guy was calling himself the Flash. And, I didn't really get that. I mean, I, maybe I was reading into it too much, but I, I felt that with it, and uh, it made the episode flow a little bit nicer. I'm not really get like, it's cheesy, but I'm with Peter on, like, it's been cheese from the start. Yeah, Maybe it's yeah, because I mean... we were used to Arrow, and that's like the antithesis of cheese. It's mold, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Arrow is just terrible. I mean, that this shit that grows on cheese that you don't like anymore. It's it's French cheese. Um, mm. I, I don't know. It's just it's like there's good in it, and I see the good in it. But I don't know. There's just nothing about this season that's really caught me yet, like at all. I mean, a lot of this stuff with like Zoom, it just feels like exactly the same thing as the first season. Really? I mean, you got rid of Harrison Wells, but you brought in Stein, who does all the same science stuff. And I like it's just kind of like replacing all the characters that you got rid of with the same exact kind of character. Well, Zoom is very similar. I mean, because let's be honest, though. I mean, Zoom and Reverse Flash and the comics. Yeah, they're the same character, yeah, really. They're different versions of the same character. So it makes sense that, I mean, 
maybe in the show they might even t- make it make it a little bit different and say that Zoom is actually Eobard Thawne in the other u- universe. They, may, they right. might even go that route because we got the cliffhanger at the end. In the other universe, there is Harrison Wells, who presumably is just Harrison Wells. He's not infected with, you know, he's not. Well, he's not, you know, doppelganged by uh, Thawne. You know, poor choice of words. <laughs> well, what did I say? You said Eiffel Towered. <laughs> Which both of the flashes should definitely do to Iris. Am I right? It'd be the well, quickest thing ever. Uh, hey, hey, people make the speed well, joke, but they're also the like two of the only people on the planet who can make every part of their body vibrate, which is a very valuable. Oh God, took it to a whole. Okay, other level. getting back to the actual show, um, uh, like there's a lot of fan service in this show too, and I feel like that adds to the cheese factor. And I feel like the the one instance that played over the top was the you know the comic cover Flash of Two yeah, Worlds, yeah, where they X-Men. ran on opposite sides of the randomly yeah, placed and, wall. Yeah. And, <laughs> And Patty Stivett holds up her arm for some reason just to imitate the comic cover. Yeah, that was I was fun. like, okay, that's too much for me. Yeah, that that was fan service. That's that's fair enough. Yeah, I imagined in my head like you know, my my mom is really into uh, superhero shows and stuff. And uh, now that season one of Flash <laughs> is on Netflix, I imagine her going through this and then going over to Hulu and going through this and then her calling me and going. Why the fuck did they run on the opposite sides of a brick wall? Because <laughs> she will say that shit. Uh, and I yeah. will have no answer for her other than, yeah. I don't know, they wanted to make it look like a comic it's just, cover. It's just for like, the for... internet, too. Because all, all, all I see about the internet is just them referencing things. Like, yeah. most of the conversations are not about this character was interesting, this development was interesting, this happened, and it was interesting. Oh my god, they did this! Oh my god, did you catch this? Oh my god, did you catch that? Oh, look at this! Well, Speaking of references, they actually reference Swamp Thing in this episode. Because the place where they're actually holding Patty Spivet is the Woodrow facility or whatever, like plant plant area, greenhouse thing. And Jason Woodrow is a character in Swamp Thing. Um, he's a very important character in Swamp Thing, actually. Is, uh, is, is Patty Spivet uh, an important character in the comic books? Uh, she is in The Flash in the comics. She's a, a love interest for Barry. And oh, the comics. Because when she first showed up, I totally felt like this is a spy. This is somebody that's trying to infiltrate. Oh. Trying to get close. <laughs> oh no, shit's gonna um, go down. Oh, no, so her name is Patty Spivet. Yeah, it's a really weird what a name. what a name. I know. I thought it was Spivet, like with a V. Yeah, Spivet. Yeah, Patty Spivet. Oh. Oh, it sounded like you said with an F. Well, it didn't matter. Alternate universes. You can have F's or uh, uh, V's. <laughs> Interchangeable. Um, I I just talk about her actually because uh, she's obviously the new addition. It's going to be like a new regular. It's just, it's like right after they said there are alternate universes with doppelgangers in every universe. And then she showed up. I was like, she's a doppelganger. She's going to do something <laughs> crazy. She's a doppelganger ready thong. She's nah. a new partner. Nah, honestly, I mean, I'm kind of like, people seem to like her a lot. Um, I thought she was fine. Like, I didn't get the love. She was a wee bit over the top. Uh, I'm a little bit cynical with her, though, because I feel like, oh, it's a love interest to delay Barry and Iris for another year. Like, you know, yeah. like, that's just kind of what I felt like when she showed up. Um, was, was Iris even in this episode? Who even cares about her anymore? Yeah, <laughs> she was on the. Episode. She was. Yeah. Was she? Oh, she's. Is she getting pushed away? She she was there at the beginning whenever uh, she had to tell everyone that she needs the room to speak to Barry because apparently she has some kind of a fucking authority. Yeah, she was the, she was the part about? I liked the least about the three episodes they watched or four or whatever. It's also weird whenever uh, it's like, oh, uh, her father was like a father to you, right? It's like, oh, this is a... yeah, that makes that's a little bit weird. Although Joe's still great; he's like the best father on TV. I oh, like he's Joe. awesome! It's just whenever they directly point out, like, hey, Barry, he's like a father to you, right? Yeah, yeah, I've known him for like eleven years. Isn't it kind of weird that you want to fuck his daughter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah, that is kind of weird. Which Iris's mom comes back at the end of this episode too. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. That was weird. I don't know where that's going. But, but. And the actress, whenever, like, I think it was the first line she said was just like, it's been a long time. Yeah. Probably. Which was kind of like this jokey thing. And then the next line was like, I want, I just want to, I want to see our daughter. It was like, whoa, this is a w- random tonal shift just in two lines. It was very odd. Um, that feels like a thread I do not want to watch at all. Yeah. I don't know. See, Alan, you're talking me out of things right now. And <laughs> I don't like that. No, the rest of the show was a lot of fun. It was just. Was. Yeah. 
It was, I really, I really enjoyed it. Um, before we move on, Peter, what do you think about? Um, I forget. Guy that's supposed to represent us. Uh, him vibe. getting. Huh. Vibe. Vibe. Right. Yeah. Vibe. Let's go. Oh. Yeah. So what's going on there? What's going on? Exactly. I don't understand. Um, I guess he's getting his uh, his powers, doesn't he? All right. So one. was that character already a character in the comics? Oh yeah, yeah he's he, vibe. He's become he even vibe. had his own series that didn't last more than like twelve issues because nobody gave a crap. It didn't yeah. vibe with people. No. Uh, he actually says that too. That's gonna be how he gets his name. The only contribution he had was in was in JLA where Hawkman sits next to him and he's on, covered in blood. Yeah. And he's like, "What's up with that blood? Are you bleeding?" He's like, "It's not my blood." So then he just gets just it moves away from him. <laughs> 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 the best thing he's contributed. Yep. Um, yeah. I, well, let's I, keep. You know, it's just you know? it's another plot device they can use, isn't it? To. Um, you can see things, so then yeah. they can get to the place in time or whatever. So, so in the power in, in the comic books, what exactly is his power? I don't he touches know. things and sees through them or whatever. I've never, I've never read a vibe. Uh, comic particularly so i can't really say uh, if i remember correctly he was his character was created around the whole like b-boy movement so he was like centered around like break dancing and like sound waves and stuff oh <laughs> well, yeah i thought you he know what sound I'm waves, so... no, you know what i'm sorry i asked Luckily, yeah. the yeah, show he... luckily the show is taking away the break dancing element of the character well, he's, he's supposed to rock fuck. like these his sunglasses and he's got like a, a vest and like baggy he's got pants. Dual rope. Yeah, and then he like, <laughs> but he can propel himself using like sound waves. So like yeah. pushes against like the ground to like lift in the air. He's kind of like a really bad version of Quake. Hmm. Cool. Which we'll Speaking be talking about the Quake. good version later on in this episode. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna take this opportunity to to just move right along into Arrow talk. Full spoilers for season four, episode two, entitled "The Candidate." Uh, Oliver and Thea are concerned with a family friend plans. Blah blah blah. blah. Peter, just talk about Arrow. All right, I'll make this. I'm nice. also going to take this opportunity to use the restroom because <laughs> I don't know what anything is in Arrow. Okay, I will make this relatively sharpish. So, hope oh, Alice is going for number one, not number two. Um. So, um, yeah, so this week, basically the effects of Thea being thrown in a Lazarus pit last season started to show up, because, like, Ollie's noticing that she's, like, being a bit too aggressive, she's, you know, almost killing people. Uh, at one point, she, led, I shit you not, she set someone on fire. Um, so it was good? And this is the point where Ollie's like, okay, I think something is up with my sister. She just set someone... <laughs> <laughs> on fire. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they have this. They have, they have this weird fight actually in the middle where Ollie sort of confronts her, and like starts like questioning all the moves she's using when she's fighting because it's like, the, the blows that are meant to like lead to death. You know, like it's the tactics she's using are like, the wrong tactics, and they basically start. It's kind of like a sparring thing that just gets rough, and she like tra start, she starts trying to properly hit him and like kick the shit out of him. <laughs> And I have like a proper fight, like in like you know the arrow cave, and you know they're knocking over <laughs> shelves and shit, and everyone's watching. Eventually, like you know, uh, Diggle and stuff have to like step in and like pull her off because he's he's like sort of refusing to fight back a little bit and whatever. Why do why don't they call it the quiver? Oh, they should. That makes so much more sense. They should. Um. <laughs> it's funny though, like the action is actually really good in this episode. There's a lot. It's of always like, been good, but no, it's even better. Like, I feel like the budget's been up because there's no, lots I, of... I I believe it because it's always been good. Yeah, in the beginning, it was always been the positive in the show. But there's really cool stuff with uh, like they're all fighting. Like, because obviously there's like four of them now fighting. Because Arrow, Diggle, Red Arrow, who's like uh, Fithia and Black Canary. Right? So they're all fighting as a team now, right? And it's, I think this is the opening of the episode. And at one point, uh. Green Arrow just shoots out an arrow because uh, Black Canary needs to get from like, the top of a building down to the ground, and he's already down there. So he shoots an arrow up, and she glides down the arrow. Like she just jumps as it's like just as it's been shot, and it's like really cool. Like it's a really cool like action beat. Um, so it put me in a good mood at the start of the episode, and the episode was okay for the most part. It, it, it had a, the flashbacks were annoying as always. Um, 
but <laughs> the whole thing leads to Wait, this uh, is season four right why yeah. are they still flashing back to this know. stupid island <laughs> I know. Um, just this is getting today? way worse than lost was about the island um don't, don't you say bad things about lost you son of a bitch hey i love lost uh, good um but i love it the, the whole point of the episode is that uh one of uh their mom's old friends is tr- goes to run for mayor she gets almost assassinated within like four hours of announcing her candidacy because yeah, it's like a running joke that the last two mayors have been like killed or whatever and mm-hmm. uh ollie decides at the end of the episode that he's going to run for mayor because he wants to be able to not only just be like a, a vigilante in the darkness and do his usual vigilante thing, he wants to be someone who can like step out into the, like the public domain and try and make make things change for the better in the city, in the limelight. That's actually, that's actually really cool. I like that. I wish they would do that in the comic books. Um, so he, he decides to do that. Um, the other thing that sets up at the end of the episode is uh, once the whole thing about Thea comes out and other people don't know about it, Laurel... Uh, he's like, so Thea, what what happened in uh, Nana for better? You know, you know what what happened? What what, what did this? Oh, there was this thing. It was a Lazarus pet, and you know, it made me better. You know, I was almost dead. It was it was totes awesome. So basically, those two. I can't even right now. At the end of the episode, <laughs> um, <laughs> dig up Sarah, Laurel's sister, because Laurel wants to go with Thea to the Lazarus pit to try and resurrect her sister. Um, so they dig up the grave, they open the casket, and she's like, you know, it's been like a year since she died, so she looks kind of shit. She's decomposing, what the f- Yeah, she's like half decomposed. She's, she looks all, like, the face is all, like, the skin's all sucked in. I don't know if it's accurate to what a year would be. No, because it's the CW and it would be too gross. But, um, it's, I'll, I will at least say that it's not, uh, like, she doesn't look, like, pretty as if she just went down. She's She does look like something's been happening. Um... And that's the cliffhanger. But we know she's coming back because she's going to be in Legends of Tomorrow, so she has to be resurrected. And this is uh, is it, isn't, that where Const- isn't that where Constantine comes in, probably? He may, yeah, maybe. He's like episode oh, four, I think, or something. Alan, I just love that. I got a Alan, question. Alan, 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 Alan. Can we all... I will do it too. Can I'm we not all watching watch... this shit. I'm not no, watching. just that one episode of Arrow no. with Constantine. That Please. is the one episode I will not watch. Oh. You have a Constantine podcast. What time is it? Hellraisers, the hell place. It's constant yeah. time. <laughs> hey, Alan, I, I do wonder what if they introduced Batwoman and just the whole idea of the Lazarus Pit with her and this. Like, they're already using a lot of the Batman stuff, and she's not really a main Batman family member. Hmm. Like, I feel I like that would she... actually be a pretty good idea to introduce her into this world. Um, that would actually work. But yeah, no, I mean, the actual main plot, the, the whole idea of Ollie running for mayor uh, is actually kind of intriguing. Um, so it actually could end up in a really fun season long plot the other thing that's interesting in this episode is actually the character <coughs> who becomes Mr. Terrific what do you say? Is yeah. Mr. Terrific? Terrific is a character yeah. yeah I remember that from news or is it Static Shock that's coming on to the show no it was Mr. Terrific I was remember Mr. the Terrific? news a few weeks ago um, yeah. and he's gay Static Shock, Mr. Terrific's gay yes I don't know. That. Oh, he's both. So the character in this is gay. So, uh, but he, he works at uh, Palmer Tech and like him and uh, Felicity sort of become friends because he's like helping her and she has to fire a bunch of people and she ends up deciding not to and he, he's like, you know, the new science wizard at the company. He's actually quite good. He's quite likeable. Like right away, he like he had a good screen presence um, and it's actually cut a little bit because he, he does that sort of broken sentence thing a little bit and like like uh, Felicity, because like, like the only person around here who's going to speak in broken sentences is me. <laughs> and it was like, I was like, I was poking fun at himself because she does okay. that a lot. Yeah. Scoff at well, all you want, but that, that at least was slightly amusing. Um, it's, you got any last words? Um, some stupidity. Uh, the whole you know going to the Lazarus Pit thing it feels a bit forced, and I really do not want to stay anywhere near the League of Shadows stuff because it dragged down season three like a bitch. But action still really good. Um, the main plot line with Ollie running for mayor seems like it could have potential, um, and the villain's still kind of cool. Uh, he's he's got at least some interesting stuff to him. Who, by the well, way, is going to appear in the Flash and Legends of Tomorrow? Who is Oops. Damian Dark, the villain? Oh, interesting. I guess I'll have to Wikipedia what the fuck's going on. <laughs> also, it's good to know that uh, season four is apparently the year in shows where people run for office because. Uh, 
that's happened on a few other shows, including uh, Parks and Rec. So that's right, Parks and Rec. A better show. I agree. A much better. More show. street shooting. <laughs>